This is Frank Goss with SGTV. Think of them as cinema, little tiny paintings made over a lifetime, like 35 millimeter stills that could be linked together into a lifelong feature film, like travel postcards made on envelopes, quick, fresh, vibrant, small. Colin Campbell Cooper took pencils, crayons, watercolors, and oils into the field and made sketches. Some were simply memory tools. He would use them to recall a fleeting cloud formation in the Himalayas, a particular ray of light in Avignon, costumes on a cobbled street in Algiers, or the instant of sunrise over the Rincon in Santa Barbara. At other times, he started with a pencil drawing, converted it to a more realized small watercolor, and then used this study to create a small oil. Eventually, if he liked the small painting, he would work it into one of his large exhibition canvases. Cooper was a member of the National Academy, and in the mid-19th century, the Academy began showing small pieces in their sketch room. As a result, friends, collectors, and fellow artists began to give real attention to the work of great artists in the small format. Oftentimes, viewers were shocked to see the small studies next to the larger finished work, only to realize that the artist's field sketches were fresher, more vibrant, and simply better than the work done later in the studio. Cooper always kept small sketchbooks with him. Most of the time, he simply worked in pencil, but often switched to pastels or watercolors. It is also apparent that he took cardstock, artist papers, and small canvases into the field where he painted en plein air. But not all sketches were done outdoors. There were times when Cooper, working in his studio, created small studies that led to larger paintings. For Cooper, these small works were often thought of as his private notes. They were the unguarded, unedited, and often unfinished first thoughts on a subject. But they allow us to view his facility of hand in small subjects, his original concepts for landscapes, his first thoughts about the arrangement of a still life, and his initial strokes as he rendered the human figure. Because he did not think of these in the same way as fully realized paintings, we get a glimpse into his more naive and spontaneous responses to life. What is evident in these small pieces is that the man, Cooper, was in love with life. Each little painting is like a storage container, a sort of mason jar filled with preserved delicacies. After being stored for over a hundred years, they are finally opened and ready for sampling. Come and enjoy stills from Cooper's cinema through the end of June.